How do you wait for what you want? Do you wait loudly? This is taking so long! Maybe you've perfected the slow burn. Or you play the blame game. It's all your fault for making us wait. So not fair. Or maybe instead of waiting, you just let it all out. <laughs> Waiting until later for what you want now is never easy, but it is possible to wait well. For starters, when you have to wait, take a deep breath. And another one. <sighs> that lets your body know it's okay to chill out for a minute. You can use the time to focus on something positive, like all the stuff you've got to be grateful for. Food to eat, a place to sleep, friends. Oh, my dog. And you can take time to remember what's true, that God is always right there with you, even if you have to wait. In fact, God can give you patience as a special gift. Waiting well with patience can actually make you wise. When you choose to be patient with your little sister, or when you draw a cool picture instead of complaining while you wait at the doctor's office, others can see God at work in you. You can say, I'm gonna keep waiting for you, God. That's why patience is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud. Your plans, your dreams are so much greater. Your timing, you keep, it's always better. So when I'm feeling weak, your strength is always perfect. So I'm holding on, cause I know it will be worth it. So I'm I know it will be worth it, so I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm gonna keep on waiting with my whole side and you got I'm gonna trust in you And while I'm waiting, I believe that you are never me Hey, welcome to Storyland. This week, we're talking about patience while we take a look at the story of what it means to wait well. What is wrong with this bottle? I mean, ah. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about patience. Which is waiting until later for what you want now. Mmm. Mmm. You maybe should have waited until later for lunch. What? Why? Because our guest today is an expert in lunch. Or dinner. Or really anything you can grow. What about a second lunch? A lemon cheese? Afternoon tea? Supper? 
He probably can do that too, Hobbit boy. Well, what are we waiting for? Nothing. Without further ado, let's welcome Grill Master Kevin. Hey everyone. Kevin, I'm so excited that we're gonna have a grilling expert with us today. Well, mostly I just like eating, especially really good meat, and so I've tried to learn more about that. And the fun part about when you're cooking meat is that you always get to eat it. So we've heard that your pulled pork is unparalleled. Well, at least according to my family and friends, especially my kids. So do you think you could maybe walk us through on the way you prepare your famous pulled pork? Absolutely. Let's make it. All right, guys, first, you need to trim up your pork shoulder and put a dry rub like all over it. Well, what does trim up mean? Well, trim up means when you buy a, a pork shoulder, it's gonna have a lot of fat on it. So you wanna trim off some of the fat because if you have too much fat, it's not gonna taste very good and it's probably not even gonna cook very well. So what is dry rub? Well, dry rub is what you use to season the meat and to, to make it taste good and it can break down a lot of the fatty tissue inside. So you take the dry rub and you put it all over the meat. You wanna get the top, the sides, the bottom, everywhere all around it, put plenty of it on there until it's, it's good, it's nice and covered. So then you wanna leave it in the fridge overnight and then the next morning is when you start to prepare the smoker by starting some coals in your smoker and then you gotta wait for that too to burn down and get ashy so you know the coals are ready. Now once those coals are ready, you wanna pick out some wood logs from the wood pile. Now this one right here, cherry wood, smell that. That smells really good. You can smell the cherries in it, really. And so you wanna have your wood logs nice and dry though, because if they're not dry, it's gonna give a lot of gross smoke and the meat's not gonna taste good. But for your wood to get ready, it's gotta wait outside in the elements for six months to a year so it can actually get dry. Now, that's a long, long wait. Yeah, that is. So you wanna add a few wood logs to the charcoal to start a fire in the smoking wood chamber. And then finally, you can take the pork shoulder out of the fridge and put it on the smoker grill. But you have to leave it on there for like five, maybe six hours. But don't look at it, really, don't look at it. Why? There's a saying that says, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Which is true, when you open the lid, you release the heat on your grill, which can slow the cooking process. Now, after five to six hours, you can check the temperature to make sure that it's at least 165 degrees after five or six hours. That's a long time. It, it is a long time, but we're still not done yet. Next, you pull it off, you wrap it in butcher paper or a foil, and you put it back on the smoker for another two, maybe three hours, or at least until the meat has reached a temperature of 203 degrees. Is it ready yet? I'm getting really hungry. It, it's not ready yet, nope. You take it off the smoker at that point, you wrap it in big towels, and you put it inside a cooler and let it rest for about two more hours, and then finally, at long last, you can pull it apart and start to eat it. Two more hours? That totals close to 11 hours? Yeah, it, yeah, that's a long time. But a brisket, if you're smoking a brisket, man, that could take 24 hours on the smoker. Well, what happens if you don't wait and you try and skip some of the steps? Well, if you skip some steps, the meat could end up dry, it could end up tough, it definitely won't pull apart very easily. It's definitely not gonna be as tasty or delicious. And finally, guys, after all that waiting, here is the finished product. That smells heavenly. The presentation, the smell, the look of it, perfect. Well then, guys, I'm gonna use my trusty claws right here. We're gonna pull it apart a little bit, and I, would, you, would you guys like some? Like yeah. try? Yes. Oops. All right, well, ladies first. Thank you. Let's see what we got here. And there you go. Wow. Mm. All I can say, best second lunch I've had in forever. Glad to hear it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My stomach is so happy, I can't wait for dinner. Speaking of waiting, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Proverbs, which is a collection of wise sayings, many from King Solomon. Solomon became king at a very young age. He was worried about leading an entire nation with so little experience. One night, God spoke in a dream and told Solomon that he could have any gift he wanted. Solomon could have asked for money or power. But instead, 
Solomon asked God for wisdom so he could be the best leader for his people. God listened and honored Solomon by making him the wisest man on earth. Many of the things Solomon learned were said and written down together with other wisdom. The sayings called Proverbs are short sentences or stories that help people make wise decisions in their everyday lives. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Erica. And today, <clears throat> and today, <clears throat> so sorry, hold on a second. <laughs> That's better. Thank you for your patience, which is actually what we're talking about today. In Proverbs, we find wisdom that can apply to every area of our lives, especially when we get frustrated or have to wait for what we want. Let's check out this awesome verse. Proverbs 14:29 says, "Anyone who is patient has great understanding." But anyone who gets angry quickly shows how foolish they are. Ouch! Let's break that down. Anyone who is patient has great understanding. Someone who has understanding makes wise choices. So, choosing patience can help you become a wise person. But let's look on that flip side. But anyone who gets angry quickly shows how foolish they are. Being foolish doesn't mean that you aren't smart. In fact, you could get 100% on every test and still make foolish choices when something makes you angry. Patience is a gift and skill that you can develop. It's all about choosing to respond instead of react. Think of it this way. Suppose a kid cuts ahead of you in line on the playground. If you choose to react without thinking first, you're probably going to shove back or yell at them. And we all know how that ends up. But if you choose instead to respond, you take a deep breath first. You think about what you're going to say and do. You remember that you have the power to stop a fight rather than add to it. You might even make a quick silent prayer to God. Help! It's very silent. Then you choose to respond with patience and not shove back or yell. You can always tell a teacher if it keeps happening, but in the meantime, you stop a fight and you will still get a turn even if you have to wait a little longer. In the Bible, we discover a lot of stories about patience. Stories about people who were super impatient, but also stories of people who learned patience through the tough work of waiting. Take King David. He waited more than 10 years from the time he was anointed as Israel's next king until he actually became king. And during most of that time, he was on the run. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. He is at my right hand, so I will always be secure. Or think about Joseph. He also waited years and years from the time his brothers sold him to be enslaved through unfair imprisonment to when he was released and put in charge of all Egypt. Joseph later told his brothers, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. And finally, remember Jesus. Jesus chose to be patient at all times, both with his friends and family who often misunderstood him, and with his enemies who constantly tried to trick him. Jesus is a perfect example of patience. And David and Joseph can also show us what it looks like to wait well. Let's take one more look at our verse. Anyone who is patient has great understanding, but anyone who gets angry quickly shows how foolish they are. So, choose to take a deep breath, 
Choose to respond instead of react. Choose to do something creative or helpful with your time. And pretty soon, you'll discover what it looks like to wait well. The end. Gotta admit, I usually get it backwards. Speak first, think second. Yeah, for me, it's more about holding my tongue when I have to wait a long time, like on a road trip. Are, Are we, we there, there yet? yet? Hey, I am not the perfect model of patience either, but I can say that I'm growing. I'm more patient now than I used to be. So, what's our part in the story? Our role is to learn how to wait well. And there are lots of ways to do that. The first and best way to wait well is to ask God for help. Paul wrote that patience is actually a gift from God's spirit. You can also wait well by finding something to do with your waiting time, like encouraging someone. You could even make the time go faster by building an awesome brick creation. Or surprising your mom by taking out the trash before she asks. Another great way to wait well is to make yourself take a couple of deep breaths and give yourself time to think before you react. You can also remember what's true, that God loves you and has a good plan for you, even when you have to wait. And God is always with you when you wait. Even on a 10 hour road trip when your little brother is poking you in the back seat. Even then, I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. So here's the thing, waiting can make you wise. Waiting can also make you some really, really yummy food. Uh, it's still hours to dinner time. Yeah, but right now it's officially Story Lab snack time. Yes. Yes, yes it is. Thank you for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Pickles. Kevin, it was so awesome of you to do our waiting for us. My pleasure. See Can't you forget mine too. I like Story Lab snack time too. Don't forget the barbecue sauce. You gotta have barbecue sauce. That's the most important part.